Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that this finds you and your family doing well today. I want to thank you so much for joining me. You can probably tell this is not my typical surroundings here. That's because I am on the road. I'm in Kentucky preaching, and I'm just in my hotel room with my laptop. Don't even have an external microphone here. So uh, please do forgive the rather Spartan environment here and probably not so great audio quality. But I wanted to do this little video because recently, in the last few days, former President Donald Trump has put up a post on social media that is raising a lot of eyebrows. And one of his supporters sent him a message that uh, really encouraged him apparently. So I want us to look at the message, Trump's response to it, and why Trump may think the way he thinks. So this person says, quote, it's ironic that Christ walked through his greatest persecution the very week they are trying to steal your property from you. But have you seen this verse? And quote Psalm 109, three through eight. And Trump said of this, received this morning beautiful thank you so the comparison here is unmistakable this person is comparing the persecution that jesus experienced to the opposition i won't even say persecution but the opposition that donald trump is facing from his political opponents uh trying to steal his property and all of that that's been going all these court cases that have been going on for months now and uh, the, the comparison is absolutely unmistakable. And uh, notice the person makes a point of saying that Christ walked through his greatest persecution the very same week that um, people are trying to take Trump's property from him. He's referring to Passion Week. And that's what we're in the middle of right now, right? So the comparison is absolutely unmistakable. And Trump says, receive this morning beautiful Thank you. Now, my gripe here today is not nearly as much with Donald Trump as it is with those who profess to be uh, his, some of his Christian supporters. Donald Trump is no theologian. Not only is he not a theologian, Donald Trump is not a Christian. And lest you get mad at me for saying that, uh, please do keep in mind, Donald Trump is a man who has on multiple occasions when directly asked if he has ever asked God for forgiveness, has on more than one occasion said no. He doesn't think he's done anything that is worthy of the need for forgiveness. He doesn't think he has anything to be forgiven of. And so by definition, uh, someone who has never asked God for forgiveness is not a Christian. So Donald Trump is no theologian and he is not even a Christian. But uh, Donald Trump, ever since he ran for the White House the first time back in 2000, well, he started running in 2015, but uh, ever since then, he has been surrounded with this spiritual advisory board that is populated almost completely with word of faith, new apostolic heretics, charlatans, false prophets, and uh, Paula White, as she was the chairwoman of his spiritual advisory board when he was president, and he's been surrounded by a bunch of other word of faith heretics uh, as well, Guillermo Maldonado, and uh, Kenneth Copeland has also been a very vocal supporter and has had a lot of access to Donald Trump. And so I see some people today uh, in evangelical circles pointing out the blasphemous nature of this, and that is right and appropriate, but uh, it seems like a lot of the ire is directed towards Trump, whereas it should be directed towards those people who profess to be Christians and know better, or certainly should know better. So I want to give you just a couple of clips of why Donald Trump may have such an inflated view of himself. This from Kenneth Copeland. And a hat tip, by the way, to my friend Stephen Kozar for this video. If you're not subscribed to his channel yet, I would encourage you to do so. So thank you, Stephen. You were born again of the Spirit. You were born of the Spirit. 
You were born exactly with the same spiritual DNA as Jesus. You were born with the DNA of God Almighty. You're not a little like Jesus. You are exactly like Jesus. You're not a little like Jesus. You are exactly like Jesus. You're born of His Spirit. You have His name. You have His Word. You are not only in His image. You are in His likeness. Copeland says, You're not a little like Jesus. You are exactly like Jesus. Oh, certainly that's just a one-off from Kenneth Copeland, right? He just kind of got carried away there, huh? No, not so much. Let this mind be in you. Let this be the way you think. Let this mind be in you, which was also in the anointed Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And you do not think it robbery. You don't, it, it's not taking anything away from God. to be equal with our Father, to be equal with our Lord Jesus. He's the one that caused it to happen. And our good God said, oh yeah, they're my children. Of course they're equal to me. I gave birth to them. Well, of course we are equal to God, says Kenneth Copeland. The heresy in the Word of Faith movement has gotten so bad that they've pretty much dropped the little from the little God's doctrine. Uh, many Word of Faith teachers now just flat out teach that we are equal to God. Uh, and this is, this is standard fare from Kenneth Copeland. Of course, Sam Storms and Michael Brown say, oh, well, they're not aware that Kenneth Copeland teaches such things. He teaches this stuff on every day that ends in Y. He has been teaching this for decades, literally for decades. I, I, I could give you hundreds upon hundreds of examples of him teaching this kind of stuff. So um, kind of hard to blame Trump when he has such a inflated view of himself when he's surrounded by theological heretics from the Word of Faith movement like Kenneth Copeland. Now I want to show you another clip. This is from the Los Angeles International Church. I actually believe International Church of Los Angeles. And uh, it was pastored by a um, husband-wife team, Mark and Denise Goulet. I think some there's some uh, new blood in there now. But uh, this is a, a false church, Word of Faith church. And uh, back in 2016, they had a very special guest at their church, and it was none other than President Donald Trump. He was there for a Sunday service, and Donald Trump is about to take the stage. And again, this is not a knock on Trump. This is a knock on Pastor Denise Goulet. Of course, if you have a church with a female pastor, you have neither a pastor nor do you have a church. But that's a topic for another video. Uh, listen very carefully to what Pastrix Denise says about Donald Trump. And listen very carefully for the source of her information. What I was hearing the Lord say was, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. Yes. What I was hearing the Lord say was, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. Yes. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. She said that about Donald Trump? Is it any wonder that Trump has an inflated view of himself? Is it any mystery as to why he has no problem with accepting comparisons to Jesus Christ? He was in this mega church in Las Vegas, a Word of Faith church, and he, the pastor, the pastrix, 
Denise Goulet, said those words about him, conferred upon, basically conferred upon him deity. This is unbelievable. And not only is that jaw-dropping heresy, not only is that blood-curdling blasphemy, but the source of this blasphemy, according to Denise Goulet, is none other than God himself. She heard the Lord say those words to her. She is laying this blasphemy at the feet of God. It is just unbelievable. Within evangelicalism, if you look for the most egregious heresy, the most brazen false prophets and charlatans and hucksters, they all find a welcoming home in the Word of Faith New Apostolic Reformation movement, which comprises the majority of the charismatic movement. There are there, not even Sam Storms and Michael Brown would come out and definitively say Kenneth Copeland is a heretic and a false prophet, false teacher who is on his way to hell. Not even they would do that. And if, dear friends, if Kenneth Copeland is not a false teacher, no one is. No one is. So my gripe here is not so much with Donald Trump, uh, but with these people who know better and just teach this kind of jaw-dropping blasphemy. It's hard to blame Trump for having an inflated view of himself when this pastrix, Denise Goulet, and by the way, if you're in a church with a female pastor, you have neither a pastor nor do you have a church, but that's subject matter for another video. When pastrix Denise Goulet says that she hears from God and God confers upon Donald Trump those words that God said about his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. On the off chance that Donald Trump may somehow watch this video, Mr. Trump, uh, you are not a Christian. By your own admission, you have never asked God for forgiveness, but you are in dire need for God's forgiveness. And I say this not as a slight to you. I voted for you twice. Uh, you are not a Christian, but you do need God's forgiveness because you are a sinner. You have broken God's laws like everyone has. Thou shalt not lie, you have told lies, everyone has. Thou shalt not steal, if you have ever taken anything that does not belong to you, you are a thief. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But Jesus says, if you look at a woman with lust, you have committed adultery already in your heart. Go through the Ten Commandments, sir. You have broken God's laws thousands upon thousands of times. We all have. We have all sinned against God in word, in deed, and in thought. And because we have sinned against God who is eternal, the punishment of that sin is also eternal. And anyone who dies in his or her sins will face the full undiluted fury of God's wrath in hell for all of eternity. The punishment will never end. The worm will not die. The fire will not be quenched. You cannot earn your salvation. Your works are as filthy rags before a thrice holy God. Your greatest need is to be forgiven of your sins. And God has made a way for you to escape his wrath. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. Jesus was the perfect God-man, one person with two distinct natures, truly God, truly man. And as the God-man, Jesus lived a life of perfect satisfaction and pleasure to God the Father. Jesus never sinned, never broke any of God's laws. He was the lamb without blemish. And Jesus willingly laid down his life on the cross, sir. And he took the wrath of God that burns against the sins of his people. Jesus was treated by God the Father as though he were a sinner, even though he was not a sinner. And the full undiluted fury of God's wrath was poured out on Christ, and he drank in every last drop of it, died on the cross, three days later bodily raised from the dead, proving himself to be who he said he was, God in human flesh. And the only way to be saved, the only way to have the wrath of God removed that your sins have earned you, is to repent of sin, turn from sin, and place your trust 
in the risen Lord Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross. There is salvation in no one else. There is no other name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. Only Jesus Christ. And Mr. Trump, if you're watching this, please surround yourself with, with real Christians. Because the likes of Paula White is not a Christian. Kenneth Copeland is not a Christian. All these word of faith heretics, prosperity preachers, not a Christian. And I, and I grieve that they have presented before you such a horrible horrible example of what Christians should be. These are wolves. These are false prophets. How many of them, sir, prophesied that you would be serving a second consecutive term in the White House right now? And you're not. They're false prophets. They're not hearing from God. They have made a mockery of Christianity before you. And I, I grieve for that because these are not Christians. These are false teachers. These are the kinds of people Jesus warned his followers about wolves in sheep's clothing. So, um, Mr. Trump, I, if by some chance you're watching this, I just gave you the gospel. I pray that you would go to Christ and confess your sins before him. If I can be of help to you, uh, reach out to me through my website, justinpeters.org. I won't tell a soul that you have uh, contacted me at all. I just want to get some good resources in your hands uh, to show you what a what true Christianity is about, and these folks have not been doing it, sadly. All right, dear ones, thank you very much for watching. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you all.